recently made a video reviewing various accessories that I had acquired for the Steam Deck. These products range from fairly common add-ons, such as a screen protector and memory card, to more advanced devices like a portable monitor and USB hub. Some of my audience politely suggested that instead of buying accessories, that money would be better spent on a gaming laptop. Now, there are two ways I could have responded. A, concede that they have a valid point and perhaps I should make a video recommending various budget gaming laptops with comparable performance. Or B, make a video reviewing even more expensive, more impractical, and more over-the-top accessories for Valve's little handheld. Well, if you saw the title of this video, then you know exactly what we're going to do. Some of the products I talk about today are upgrades over devices I've previously mentioned, and some are products in entirely new categories. Everything I mention in this video can be found using links in the description, and any Amazon links you see are connected to my affiliate account. As far as protective cases go, there aren't many that are more extreme than D-Brand's Project Kill Switch. The case is thick and form-fitting and made of high-quality materials. It starts at $60 but can go up from there with the right accessories, such as a skin, tempered glass, thumbstick protectors, and a travel cover. Its killer feature, however, is a kickstand attachment. While the kickstand itself isn't that exciting, the interface it uses to attach to the case is. Dbrand has a suite of other accessories planned that could attach to the back of the Steam Deck using the same interface. It was a clever design with a lot of potential, but unfortunately some last minute issues discovered with the magnets caused Dbrand to pull the plug on the product launch at the last minute. They're ditching magnets in favor of an interlocking mechanical system and are expected to relaunch in a few months. Unfortunately for Dbrand, Deckmate seems to have beat them to the punch with their own series of interlocking attachments designed for the Steam Deck. A spring-loaded quick release is used across their entire ecosystem. The grip attaches by aligning with the fan exhaust and clipping to the bottom. In addition to serving as an interface, it has two micro SD card slots. Instead of attaching with physical clips, the adapter plate uses a 3M adhesive pad so you can use Deckmate accessories with your favorite cases and docking stations. I like the Deckmate system, but I also like using the kill switch to protect my Steam Deck. So I use two of the universal plates to populate the rear of my Steam Deck with accessories, and I can continue to use the kill switch case. The universal puck can be attached to any small device to make it easier to carry battery banks, power adapters, and USB hubs. The kickstand has a high friction hinge that supports the deck from 0 to 120 degrees. The wall mount fastens the deck to vertical surfaces by using an adhesive pad or screw holes with included screws and anchors. The vase mount makes it compatible with monitor arms and TV mounts. Bundles range from $30 to $50 or can be purchased a la carte. Even with Deckmate installed, the Steam Deck still fits in most carrying cases, including these two products from JSOX. The original JSOX carrying case is designed to be an upgrade over the case the Steam Deck was shipped in. It's larger but offers better protection and additional storage space. The cavity that sits behind the deck is now moved to the inside, making it more secure. It also has slots for SD cards and a screen protector that can fold out and be used as a stand. A Velcro strap keeps the deck in place, even when the case is open. On more than one occasion, I've picked up my Steam Deck case with my deck inside, not realizing the zipper was open. I haven't dropped the deck yet, but there have been a few close calls. Having strapped to keep the deck in place is definitely a welcome insurance policy. For under $30, it's a much better design than the one that came with the deck. Because it's a carrying case, however, it's not as practical and doesn't as offer as much storage as something like a backpack. JSOX also has you covered there, as they are currently developing a Steam Deck shoulder bag as well. Unlike other bags, this one has a cavity specifically designed to adhere perfectly around the Steam Deck. It also has a Velcro strap to hold the Steam Deck in place while the bag is open. It has another large pocket in front for power adapters, cables, and other accessories. Both pockets have elastic bands to prevent the bag from falling open completely unexpectedly. A zipper pocket conceals valuables like a phone or wallet. A single thick padded shoulder strap can be slung left or right, and a second smaller strap can be used to prevent the bag from swinging around when running or riding a bike, because that's something us Steam Deck users do regularly. It's a pretty good value for under $50, and if it isn't on sale yet, it should be available on Amazon shortly. It has room for everything you might need for a practical yet portable experience. When not on the go, however, docking stations really help get the most out of the Steam Deck. Last time I reviewed a dock from Ivalor. It performed decently and had an adequate port selection for the price. Since that review, Valve has finally released their own dock that's really the benchmark for other products to match. This new 6-in-1 dock from 
from JSOX is today's recommended docking station. It has gigabit ethernet, two USB 3.2 ports, an HDMI 2.0 out, and 100 watt power delivery in via USB-C. It is lacking a DisplayPort connection and one USB port from the reference design, but it has an impressive feature that the official dock doesn't. Removing this solid aluminum plate reveals a full-size M.2 slot for expandable storage. Not only does the dock expand port selection, but the ability to populate an M.2 bay with speedy SSD storage allows you to expand your Steam Deck library as well. Of course, the Steam Deck has a micro SD slot for expandable storage, but if you're anything like me, you've already filled a one terabyte SD card to the brim with deck compatible games. A clever way to fragment your library with this device would be to keep games that play well on the Steam Deck with Steam Deck controls on the deck's internal storage or the SD card. Games that would play better with a controller or mouse and keyboard, you could store in the dock where presumably you'd be gaming in a living room or desktop scenario. Installing an M.2 drive can be done in seconds and after a quick format, the drive is ready to use. The dock itself is on sale for $100, but it can come with a one or two terabyte drive if you don't have one already. It's certainly not the cheapest option out there, but for some people, it can be a great way to expand your storage and port selection when at home. When on the go, however, you'll need a more more portable solution than this. Last time I reviewed a 6-in-1 USB-C hub from DockTech that's more or less been my go-to solution ever since. Novu sent me the most expansive compact USB-C adapter I've seen yet with this 12-in-1 hub. It has, bear with me, two USB 2.0 ports, two USB 3.0 ports, VGA, gigabit ethernet, three and a half millimeter audio, full-size SD card slot, micro SD card slot, two HDMI 2.0 ports, and 100 watt power delivery via USB-C. It also has a little display, but as far as I can tell, it's just a light bar to indicate when it has power. Other than maybe a display port, I can't think of any other I.O. you could possibly need. Conveniently, it even has room to store the USB-C connector when not in use. I attached the Deckmate Universal Puck to this hub so it can piggyback on my Steam Deck if I need to bring it with me. I also added one to the basis battery bank I reviewed last time. With both of these devices installed, my Steam Deck has almost doubled in weight and is certainly stretching the definition of handheld. If the measly 30,000 milliamp hour capacity of the basis battery bank isn't enough, Novu also hooked us up with their 40,000 milliamp hour portable power station. This is not something that can attach to the back of the Steam Deck, but it is still technically portable and with a little persuasion can even fit in the JSOX shoulder bag I showcased earlier. It has a 100 watt AC house outlet, two 5 volt 2.4 amp USB-A ports, and a 60 watt USB-C port that can be used as either an input or output. It also comes with a DC 15 volt 2.8 amp power adapter. The integrated LCD screen is informative and easy to read. It shows what ports are being used, the current power draw, and charging speed. The LED flashlight on the side is a nice feature and makes it a great outdoor companion. With this power station, you could charge the Steam Deck and three phones at the same time, or theoretically fully charge the Steam Deck at least six times. The charging capabilities of the power station are further amplified if using a power supply like this 65 watt adapter from Ugreen. Not only is this adapter smaller and more powerful than the one supplied with the Steam Deck, but it also has one USB-A port and two USB-C ports to charge several devices simultaneously. 65 watts is enough to charge the Steam Deck at its full charging speed, with some room left over for a couple additional devices. I made a mistake in my last accessories video when I recommended the Logitech K400 wireless keyboard. I have a few wireless Logitech keyboards and I incorrectly thought that device supported Bluetooth. It does work wirelessly with the Steam Deck, but it needs to be connected with the included USB unified receiver, which of course requires a hub or adapter. The keyboard I'm showcasing today actually supports Bluetooth, but it does a lot more than that. The deck top keyboard is designed specifically for the Steam Deck and basically transforms it into the form factor of a gaming laptop. I can already hear you typing away angrily in the comment section, okay? Bear with me just one minute. The Steam Deck is a comfortable handheld, at least as comfortable as any device this big has any right to be. Doesn't adding a keyboard and trackpad compromise the ergonomics? Well, yes, but only if you're using the Steam Deck as a handheld. Now, in fairness, that is what it was designed for. But remember, this is really just a Linux computer with a nice coat of Proton Paint. The majority of users will likely never explore the Linux desktop, but for those that do, a full keyboard and trackpad that attaches to the Steam Deck and holds it in an upright position could be valuable. That's not to say the deck top should be relegated to strictly productivity use cases. I can think of a few gaming scenarios where it would come in handy. 
I've put over 400 hours into the sci-fi supply chain management simulator Satisfactory. While the game is deck verified and controller support is good, I'm not nearly as productive without keys under my fingertips and a mouse in my hand. $70 to add my preferred input method for a variety of games seems like a worthwhile investment without having to jump to something like a gaming laptop. Amazingly, the keyboard is weighted in such a way that it doesn't tip backward, even when the Steam Deck is angled as far back as it will go. It can just about fold flat and rotate a full 360 degrees. They even had the foresight to include a USB splitter so you can charge the Steam Deck and the keyboard at the same time. While I think it's a solid product, I do have some concerns. First of all, it's pretty obvious this is just an OEM keyboard with a 3D printed mount attached to it. Now there's nothing inherently wrong with that, but for $70 I think it should be less obvious. Also, getting the Steam Deck in and out of the mount was a bit distressing. It took a surprising amount of force to get the deck installed, and the bottom grip was constantly catching the seam where the front and back panels of the Steam Deck meet. I can't help but think there might be a better way to attach the Steam Deck securely. With all of these accessories installed, the transformation of my Steam Deck into a full-fledged gaming laptop is complete, rendering gaming laptops completely useless. If it's not apparent already, of course I'm being facetious. A Steam Deck, even with all the accessories in the world, can never fully replace a gaming laptop. But at the same time, a gaming laptop can't fully replace a Steam Deck. I personally would much rather relax in bed with a Steam Deck in my hands than with a gaming computer on my lap. It's true, a gaming laptop can do much more than just game. And for some people that makes sense. But for someone like me, who already has a high-end desktop, has finished school, and whose job supplies them with a laptop for work, I don't really have a use for a gaming laptop. I do, however, have a use for a small handheld gaming device. Think of it this way. If I drive a minivan and one day rent a trailer to tow something that won't fit in the minivan, someone might see that and say, why don't you just buy a truck? Well, that's because I don't need a truck. A truck won't fit all my kids. I need a minivan, and very occasionally, I need that minivan to do some light truck-like things. It makes sense to just own a minivan, and when a given scenario calls for it, use an accessory to get the functionality that I need out of my minivan. Most of the time, I just need a Steam Deck, but occasionally, I need it to do some light laptop-like things. And for those scenarios, these accessories come in handy. Hopefully that makes sense. Links to everything I talked about today can be found in the video description, and down there you can also find where to buy these shirts from Retro Rifle. Check out these other Steam Deck themed videos over here if you haven't seen them already, and if you like what you see, please consider subscribing. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.